we've discovered an interview with Miles Garrett, the Browns defensive end, who has been reinstated. Reinstated Wednesday, interviewed by ESPN on Thursday. And as part of this new interview, Miles Garrett doubles down on his claim that Mason Rudolph, the Steelers quarterback, used a racial slur in the moments preceding Miles Garrett removing the helmet of Mason Rudolph and whacking him over the head with it. And uh, look, and let's be clear on this. Garrett has made the accusation in the past. This is the first time he's made it publicly. In the past, it was at his appeal hearing. And he supposedly wasn't happy that it got out. This time he reiterated it, he repeated it, he got into details about what was said. He said initially he tried to walk away. Rudolph kept coming. That's when he kind of blew a fuse. Um, look, Shireen, I got two things to say about this. First, first, if you really don't want to use it as justification for what you did, why are you talking about it at all? Why is it part of the interview? Why isn't it part of the ground rules with ESPN? Though I don't want this coming up. I don't want you asking me about the racial slur that I claim Mason Rudolph used. I don't want that to be part of this discussion. I, I, I think they're trying to have it both ways. They want him to be able to say, well, this really isn't justification, but they want people who hear it to say, well, that's justification because I'd have done the same thing if the guy used that word to me. So they're, they're walking a very fine line here when it comes to, on one hand, saying, I don't believe it's justification for what I did. and I don't want people to think I'm saying that to at the same time, hoping in a roundabout way that people hear that and say, yes, it justifies what he did. Yeah, and it, it is not going to justify, no matter what he says, no matter what he heard, nothing is going to justify his actions. And that's what Tony Dungy said, uh, you know, when you talk to, to him. It doesn't matter what was said to him. You have to keep your cool. You can't act like that. That's the first time, I think, that we've seen an act really go over the total edge like that. I know Nadama Kansu did something, stomped on Andre Girard's head and things like that. But this, to me, was just completely and totally over the top, something we had never seen before and hopefully never see again. And no matter what was said, no matter what was done, you cannot do that on a football field or elsewhere. And if it was elsewhere, he'd be in jail right now. And actually, it was Ndamukong Sue stomping on the arm of Evan Dietrich Smith and accidentally stepping on the calf of Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it was Albert Hainsworth who stomped on the okay, helmetless yeah. head of Andre Garrod and got suspended five games for that. That had been the most egregious thing we'd seen. But even this, swinging that helmet, I'm still amazed that Mason Rudolph wasn't injured. And if he had been injured, it would have been far worse than six games for Miles Garrett. But it was one of the most shocking on-field displays we've ever seen. And... Tony Dungy, I was surprised when he shared his views with me because, look, I, I, on one hand, I'm saying, well, Mason Rudolph should not be using language like this. But on the other hand, on a football field, you got to be ready to hear anything. And that's what Tony Dungy said. Here is Coach Dungy from the November 24th edition of PFT Live. I'm sorry. I don't have sympathy with Miles Garrett if, in fact, that is what happened. If we're on the bottom of the pile and Mason Rudolph is kneeing you in the groin or he's trying to poke your eye out or he's twisting your knee, something that's going to affect your ability to do your work and your career, then, yeah, you can go off. But you can't go off because somebody said something to you. All kinds of things get said out there on the field. I can't go off and jeopardize my team's chances to go to the playoffs, my career, my ability to make money because somebody called me a name. I don't care what name he, he said. That is not an excuse to me. And Coach Dungy later added that this is an issue that Miles Garrett should have taken up with Mason Rudolph after the game. Let's have a conversation about this inappropriate language you're using. Or, and, and this is my thought, take it to the officials. We see players complain to the officials all the time. I'm being held. I'm being interfered with. He's grabbing at me. He's pulling at me. Do you see what he did? Do you see what he did? He took, a, he took a swing at me. They do that all the time. And several years ago, the NFL made it clear that any type of slurs would be dealt with. So you say to the official, do you hear what this guy said to me? And you deal with it that way. You don't take the law into your own hands. You don't rip the guy's helmet off and hit him over the head with it. And Shireen... This leads to the other point that I wanted to make, and this is something you mentioned yesterday, and we can now underscore it, highlight it, circle it, put it in red, put it in yellow, put it in every color possible, because he's going to hear it more. He is good, and right or wrong, and I don't think guys should be using this language on the field, but the reality is he's going to be hearing 
everything in the book. He's going to be hearing stuff about his mother, about his sister, if he has one. He's going to be hearing it nonstop because by him, we already knew that he was going to be baited incessantly, but this interview takes it that next step farther. It's clear that you can say things that will get under his skin. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, the guys are going to go at him relentlessly trying to get that 15-yard penalty, trying to get him kicked out of the game. And look, he had a lot of 15-yard penalties last season, and most of them for, were for late hits on quarterbacks. But they're going to be trying to get him to do things. And do you not think the officials are going to be watching his every move? Absolutely they are. Anything he does that's even barely over the line, he's going to get a penalty for. So this is... This is going to be something he's going to have to deal with from now on in his career. It's not a, it's a stain that's not going away. It's just going to be there with, for, with him uh, for the rest of his career. Officials are going to be watching him. Players are going to be trying to bait him, whatever. He's got to learn to keep his cool. And hopefully he's had some help in learning how to do that because it's obvious he can't do that on his own. Well, and here's the other side of it, Shereen. If the officials are going to be watching everything he says and does and how he reacts to what players on the opposing team say to him I think it's incumbent on the officials to listen to how over the top the other players are in their handling of and treatment of Miles Garrett if it really is this free-for-all now where you've got everybody on the opposing team constantly uh, hurling insults and using slurs and expletives at Miles Garrett at a certain point you've got to protect Garrett from this onslaught especially since the NFL several years ago did begin this process. Remember, there was a fine of Colin Kaepernick at one point for using the N-word during a game. Um, And there have been other players who have been accused of using it. There have been officials who have been accused of using it. But I think that the tools are there for the officials to protect other players from Miles Garrett physically, but also to protect Miles Garrett from excessive verbal abuse aimed at getting him to blow a fuse. Well, and, and Miles just needs to stop talking at this point. He said what he's needed to say. He needs to quit talking about this and move on and, and get things together and, and start getting ready for next year and not worry about what was done then. Let's worry about what we can do now to not have this happen again. And again, I, I think I hope that he went and got some help and, and had some therapy and learned how to use that aggression that he has it's what makes him a really good player. He had 10 sacks in 10 games last year. He has 30 and a half in his career. He's a really good player, but he's got to learn to use that aggression for him and not against him, which we've seen way too many times in his career so far. I mean, it's obvious to me the decision to sit down with the ESPN yesterday was a strategic move that I think had been in the works for a long time. He was going to sit down with Jay Glazer or Fox right after the incident. Somebody pulled the plug on that, either Garrett's camp or the Browns or a little bit of both. They didn't want to say anything that could or would have been used against him by the league. So once he's free and clear to get back in, that's when he tells his story. And again, I don't buy the idea that now he may think it doesn't justify what he does, or he may think that's what he needs to say, but Telling this story and continuing to harp on the notion that a slur was uttered is the kind of thing that will get some people to say, well, now I understand why he did what he did. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.